So now the end game is finally here. We've got the ultimate accumulation of 10 years, 20 plus movies, the Infinity Saga. I think it's about time for us to take a definitive look and see just who really is the most powerful hero in the MCU. And just to be clear here, we're looking at the major heroes, just for the sake of brevity. By major, we mean heroic characters, more central to the MCU's overarching story. Titular heroes, members of the Avengers or Guardians, people like that. So as much as we love them, don't expect the likes of Shuri, Wong, the Warriors 3, Okoye make the cut. Gonna try and not make this an hour-long video this time around. And just to be clear, first off, this ranking is just my opinion. You're perfectly free to have your own different view. So try and keep it civil in the comments. And secondly, this ranking is less who can beat who in a fight, and it's more just who has shown the most power. Slight difference, but important. Also, we're definitely going to be spoiling Avengers Endgame in this video. So if you haven't seen it yet, what are you doing? Go see it. Then come back and watch the video. So let's get started. You read minds? No. Telepaths no thoughts. Empaths feel feelings. Starting at the list, Mantis. Now, the girl isn't really much of a fighter and is essentially a naive big child. But let me tell you, she has one of the best powers in the MCU. Her control of empathy is something to behold, as she was able to put Ego to sleep and even momentarily restrained Thanos with four Infinity Stones. Plus, all she has to do is touch someone, and she can instantly control them, like when she put Drax to sleep with one touch in Infinity War. However, what holds her back is that she just isn't a fighter, and has absolutely no fighting skill whatsoever. Really, she can just set up fights for her teammates if she's able to get in close, and if she were to go up against someone who knew how to fight, she'd most likely lose. Uh, what exactly is it that they do? Kick names, take ass. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sam Wilson, the new Captain America. But in order to be on Steve's level, He's got some work to do, because in terms of hand-to-hand -hand skill, he's not particularly exceptional. I mean, he lost to both Crossbones and lost to Ant-Man when he was small and was Scott's first fight in the suit. But here's the thing, Falcon never claimed to be a great fighter. Falcon's whole thing is his suit and the ability to fly. I mean... He was able to hold his own against Iron Man and War Machine in the air during Civil War. You could actually argue that he was able to defeat Spider-Man using his tech. His wings are also now bulletproof, and he can be used as both powerful offensive and defensive weapons. And he can shoot guided missiles and has wrist-mounted machine guns. However, when it comes down to it, Falcon's only human. Yes, he's great in the air. But in a battle of superpowered individuals, he really has no other option than taking the high ground and keeping his distance. See, there are weapons are placed in the lockup. Uh, we'll write your receipt. I better not look out the window and see anybody flying around in that. Hey, Sam. Next up, Black Widow. Natasha is one of the most lethal assassins and talented spies on Earth. And on top of that, she's an immensely skilled fighter. I mean, she's been able to easily defeat Jatari aliens, Hydra agents, and Ultron robots. On top of that, she's fought against Hawkeye, Proxima Midnight, Corvus Glaive, Ant-Man, and Winter Soldier. Her widow bites can cause some serious damage as well, and even held back Black Panther through his vibranium armor. And she's incredibly accurate for pistols. She's also got her electrical batons, taking down dozens of Ultron sentries, 
and using them to battle against the Black Order. However, Widow is just an expert assassin and a normal human, so really there's only so high that she can go on this list. I'm sorry. Did I step on your moment? Look, I just need to know, because the city is, is flying. Okay, look, the city is flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. Oh, good old Clint. You gotta love him. After all, he's decided that he's gonna use a bow and arrow. A medieval and archaic weapon, even though he knows there's better and more powerful stuff out there. However, what really sets Hawkeye apart from everyone else on this list is his unparalleled accuracy. He can hit multiple targets at the same time, nail moving targets without looking, and is real skilled at the quick draw. With his trick arrows, he's able to unleash explosions that sent Loki and Iron Man flying backwards, electrocuted and knocked out Scarlet Witch, and kept Vision at bay. He's battled against Black Widow on multiple occasions, and in Endgame, was able to easily take down whole gangs of people or packs of Outriders by himself. I think people sometimes undersell Hawkeye, but he really can be a force to be reckoned with. Nobody would know. Nobody. And the last I saw him, an Ultron was sitting on him. Yeah, he'll be missed, that quick little bastard. Well, hello, boys. <laughs> Nebula, a cybernetic assassin, daughter of Thanos, sister of Gamora, former right-hander Ronan the Accuser, is easily one of the most dangerous women in the entire galaxy. Nebula possesses superhuman strength and durability, to the point where she can punch through windows of spaceships or throw Gamora with one hand. Her body can also withstand some pretty serious injuries, such as falling several stories from an exploding spaceship, taking a blast from Drax's cannon at point-blank range, and even managed to survive a powerful blow from Thanos, later withstood a shockwave from the Infinity Gauntlet. And then because of her cybernetic body, she's able to just snap her arms, legs, or jaw back into place. She's also a highly skilled fighter and assassin, being able to nearly kill Thanos by sneaking aboard his ship, and probably most impressively, fight on a par for Sister Gamora, or really fight against Thanos in one-on-one -on -one combat. This is gonna hurt! Promises, promises. You didn't see that coming? Quicksilver is definitely one of the fastest heroes in the MCU as he can think, act, and move, and perceive in just seconds or less. And as such, he actually sees the world in slow motion. I mean, in his fight against the Avengers, he was able to easily weave around Captain America in his shield, and outmaneuver and speed around someone as perceptive as Hawkeye like it was nothing. He's able to perceive at bullets in slow motion, move people out of the way of a high-speed train, and unload Claw's gun before he could even react. Then during the Battle of Sokovia, he was able to use his speed to slam into countless Ultron sentries at superhuman speeds, completely shattering and dismantling them. However, even with that speed, he's actually not the smartest fighter. After all, he tried to grab Mjolnir, and because of that, he ended up taking himself out of the fight. And Quicksilver's punches actually don't pack a ton of power behind them. Like he wasn't able to take out Captain America, and he wasn't even able to take out Hawkeye. I think if he lived, we would have seen more of him. Pietro could have been higher on this list. But unfortunately, he didn't make it. He didn't see that coming. Do not ever call me a thesaurus. It's just a metaphor, dude. His people are completely literal. Metaphors are gonna go over his head. Nothing goes over my head. 
my reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. Drax might not be the most intelligent member of the Guardians of the Galaxy, but one thing is for sure. When it comes to a fight, he is more than willing to jump in head first. Literally. Drax is superhumanly strong and durable, being able to easily tear turret drones in half and straight up pulled out Korath's cybernetic implants from his head, which is just savage. He is also able to withstand direct laser fire to the chest, being slammed into the ground or slammed into trees while being pulled behind the Milano and tethered outside the ship. <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> yes. He's also a proficient fighter, especially with his knives, and is able to casually just tear through and overpower multiple opponents at once. However, Drax definitely does have his limits. He was easily beaten by running the Accuser in their first encounter, and did absolutely nothing to Thanos, the two people that he has a personal vendetta against in the movies. End of the day, while Drax is definitely tough, he's often seen as oblivious or just downright dumb. However, he is the only person in the MCU who can turn invisible. But my movement was so slow that it's imperceptible. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm invisible. Hi, Drax. Hey, you know what? There's another name you might know me by. Star-Lord. Who? Well, Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw. While Star-Lord might not seem like much at first, the guy does pack a punch. I mean, he is half celestial after all. He was able to hold the power stone in the palm of his hand and not die. However, even without that, Peter has some powerful weapons that he carries. His guns have sent Korath the Pursuer flying backwards, or briefly stunned Thanos. He's got laser bolos that have tied up Gamora and Spider-Man, or gravity mines that have held back Iron Man and even helped in restraining Thanos. His jet boots also allow him to fly all around, and his mask lets him breathe in outer space. Star-Lord is exceptionally skilled at using these weapons, even able to fly around and use his jet boots in a fight. But the only thing is that he's a bit impulsive, lets his emotions cloud his judgment. Boom. I live for the simple things, like how much this is gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, little man. Just like Star Lord, Rocket Raccoon might not look like much at first glance. I mean, he is basically a raccoon, a trash panda, if you will. But really, he's so much more. For starters, he's a lot more physically impressive than just a normal raccoon, as he's floored Gamora with a tackle, taking blast from Ronin with the Power Stone, and is fast enough to leap around and dodge bullets. But what really puts Rocket on a whole other level are his weapons gear and just his intelligence. For starters, in Avengers Endgame, Rocket was shown to be on the same intelligence level as people like Tony Stark and Bruce Banner, helping them build the time travel portal and construct the new Infinity Gauntlet. He's also an incredibly skilled planner and tactician, having broken out of 20 plus prisons and taking down a whole squad of Ravagers with dart guns, gravity mines, and taser chips. Then Rocket always carries around massive guns that have been able to battle against Ego and Thanos' army, explosives, and even a personal force field. He's also really skilled at creating weapons and coming up with things on the fly, creating the Hadron Enforcer, which destroyed Ronan's hammer and was supposedly able to blow up moons. Now I'm standing. Y'all happy? We're all standing up now. Bunch of jackasses standing in a circle. A semi stable 100 year old man. How you been, Buck? Uh, 
not bad for the underworld. Bucky Barnes, longtime best friend of Captain America, is an absolute beast. He's been artificially engineered with a variation of the Super Soldier Serum, putting him easily on par with Captain America. And his left bionic arm might actually be stronger than Cap, as Buck has overpowered Steve with his arm before. He's also an incredibly skilled fighter, being able to match up against Cap really well, beating him a couple times, and making Steve work for Victor and Winter Soldier. He beat Black Widow, Sharon Carter, Falcon, Tony, put up a good fight against Black Panther, and he fought against Iron Man alongside Captain America. Buck is also skilled with all sorts of weaponry, like magnet grenades, knives, grenade launchers, or sticky bombs, though he definitely does favor his guns. Then on top of all that, after his Winter Soldier arm was destroyed by Iron Man, he was going to renew one by T'Challa, made by Shuri and constructed completely out of vibranium. Can you move your seat up? No. I owe you again. Keep it a list. You know, he kind of tried to kill me. I thought your thing was a sword. We've been hired to stop an interdimensional beast from feeding on those batteries, and I'm going to stop it with a sword. It's being trained by Thanos since she was a child, Gamora worked her way up to being known as the deadliest woman in the galaxy. She's strong enough to lift up massive cannons from a crashed ship fired at Nebula. Dura wants to take explosions, electrical shocks, even briefly survive out in outer space. And Gamora is even agile enough to make massive leaps up into the air and dodge laser blasts. Where she really shines, though, is in her fighting skill and ability. She's torn through plenty of prison guards. She's consistently beat Nebula in every single one of their fights, and she was even able to fight against Star-Lord, Rocky Raccoon, and Groot all at once. She's also a master swords fighter, wielding her blade the God Slayer in combat, and she actually used this to disarm Groot, literally, and kill the Abelisk. I heard had a baby with an angel. Wow. It's a real wake-up call for me. Okay, I'm gonna get a Bowflex. I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna get some dumbbells. You know you can't eat dumbbells, right? It's like his muscles are made of Katati metal fibers. Stop massaging his muscles. I'm a big fan. Appreciate it. So who the hell are you? I'm Ant-Man. Ant-Man? What, you haven't heard of me? No, you wouldn't have heard of me. Now this right here is a perfect example of how we're treating this list differently. Because you see, Scott Lang can be classified as both Ant-Man and Giant-Man. But these guys are both real different power levels. So, while the same character, we're going to rank them twice on the list. So, let's talk about Ant-Man. When Scott shrinks, retains the same mass and strength as a grown man. But because it's so compacted, he can actually kill a man by punching him too hard. Ant-Man is also a fairly decent fighter, and is real skilled at using his shrinking powers in a fight, plowing through groups of thugs and going up against Black Widow, Falcon, and Yellow Jacket. He's also able to control ants, with them doing just about anything that he tells them to, and he's able to throw him at particle discs, which can grow and shrink objects. Well, you're not so crazy. Hey! <laughs> you're cute. That was a lot scarier a second ago. <laughs> what? You look like Mary Poppins. Is he cool? Hell yeah, he's cool. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Good old Yondu. While he's not really much of a hand to hand fighter, that's no problem for Yondu, considering he's got one of the most powerful weapons in the galaxy, the Yaka Arrow. By simply whistling, he was able to take down an entire squad of Sakarans before they could have time to react or fire back. He's also taken down an entire ship of Ravagers in epic fashion. Yes, Rocket and Groot helped out some, but it was mostly all Yondu. 
I mean, the Yaka arrow appears capable of penetrating anything, and can even reach speeds of Mach 5 at the least. It's ridiculously, ridiculously fast. Then Yon can go on to catch the arrow on fire for thought, allows him to fly by holding on to it, and it even held back Ego for a while. He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. Maybe it's time we finished it. It's about damn time. While Ant-Man is impressive, Wasp really steps it up a couple of notches. Similar to Ant-Man, Hope is able to reduce her size to that of an insect, effectively compacting her body while still keeping her regular sized strength and durability. In fact, she's effectively superhumanly strong and durable while shrunken down, as she's able to punch with the power of a bullet. Hope is also able to fly by using her four insect-like wings on her back, and she's incredibly agile in the air, dodging knife blades, and she's even able to run along the ridge of a knife. However, one of her greatest assets has got to be her energy blast, which can instantly knock people out, and even injure Ghost while she's in mid-face. Wasp also loves using Pym Disc fired from her gauntlets to grow or shrink things, which allows her to use pretty much anything and everything around her as a weapon in a fight. And on top of all that, Hope is an incredibly skilled fighter, having been trained in multiple forms of fighting since a young age. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Awesome. If only Cap could see you now. So I take the tank, fly it right up to the general's palace, drop it at his feet. I'm like, boom, you looking for this? Boom, are you looking? Why do I even talk to you guys? Everywhere else that story kills. That's the whole story? Yeah, it's a war machine story. Now, I really think that people underrate war machine on lists like this. I mean, I even saw one list where Black Widow was ranked as more powerful than War Machine, and that is just so unfair to Rhodey. Really, just insulting. If War Machine fights from the air and keeps a safe distance from his opponent, well, then he's a force to be reckoned with. That's what he did in Infinity War, and you could argue that he killed more Outriders than anybody else. Except probably Thor. Rhodey provided some much-needed air support for the ground troops down below launching bombing raids and laying down cover fire. However, on the other hand, he didn't have the best shown in Cap's team in Civil War. But you can't really hold that against him. I mean, while Captain America beat him, Steve also beat Iron Man. And while Rhodey was swatted away by Giant Man, Scott was also taking on the whole team by himself. Are you Tony Stank? Yes, this is, this is Tony Stank. You're in the right place. Thank you for that. Never dropping that, by the way. Table for one, Mr. Stank. Please, by the bathroom. <laughs> nice job, kid. Thanks. Well, I could have stuck the landing a little better. It's just a new suit. Wait, it's nothing. Mr. Stark, it's, it's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, we don't really it's... need to start a conversation. OK. Cap Captain? Big fan of Spider-Man? Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Just. Hey everyone. Good job. When an updated version of this list comes out a few years from now, Spider-Man will probably be a whole lot higher. I mean, the kid is seriously powerful and has some real potential. He's overpowered Winter Soldier in his bionic arm, staggered Giant Man, stopped Cole Obsidian, and even staggered Thanos during the battle on Titan. He's easily one of the most agile characters in the MCU. If not the most agile, and is durable to take attacks from Captain America, Vulture, Giant Man, Coal Obsidian, and even Thanos himself. And then in the Iron Spider suit, well, he's got four additional mechanical limbs that give him greater strength. And he's still got his web shooters, with over 500 different web shooter combinations. Plus, Peter is actually quite the strategist, as he was the one who came up with the plan to defeat both Giant Man and Ebony Maw. 
But if he's going up against a more experienced fighter, well, then that's where Spider-Man's youth and an experience works against him and holds him back. I'm back up. No, you're still away. The adults are talking. I'm sorry, I, I'm confused as to the relationship here. I mean, what, what, what is he, your ward? No. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man, then. The Doctor! What's up? I never yielded! And as you can see, I am not dead! Now, T'Challa is essentially a super soldier, just like Cap but his abilities come from magic instead of science. After eating the heart-shaped herb, he's shown he's strong enough to push back against Winter Soldier's bionic arm, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Captain America, and even topple Cole Obsidian with a single strike. He's even shown that he's slightly faster than Cap, outracing him both in the chase after Bucky and during the Battle of Wakanda. T'Challa is also a highly skilled warrior, beating Hawkeye, the Winter Soldier, Killmonger, and going toe to toe with Captain America himself. However, it's really his Wakandan tech that makes him so powerful at the end of the day. The Panther suit is a unique blend of vibranium, and like Captain America's shield, is lightweight, nearly impenetrable, and renders him immune to most forms of physical damage. It also absorbs kinetic energy to unleash as omnidirectional or focused attacks, and the vibranium claws are able to cut through almost anything, even scratching up Captain America's shield. Just don't freeze when you see her. What are you talking about? I never freeze. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? In the MCU, Captain America is something else altogether. I mean, Steve has been able to take down massive groups of men all by himself, keep fighting even through gunshots, lift a 10-ton steel beam, pull a helicopter out of the air, outrun speeding cars, fight by himself against Ultron, defeat Spider-Man, defeat Iron Man, hold his own against both Black Panther and War Machine, hold back Thanos' arm, and battle against Thanos alongside Iron Man and Thor. Just, overall, the guy is a definite superhuman. The super soldier serum really did its job. Plus, I still hold that Captain America is the best fighter in the MCU, because of a combination of his physical prowess, just his fighting skill. I mean, this guy is not only taken down massive groups of men all by himself, and fought against multiple Avengers at once, but is actually fought against all three of the main Avengers villains, Loki, Ultron, and even Thanos. I almost wanted to put him higher on the list, but looking at everyone who was ahead, I just couldn't justify it. You hear okay? Notice you've copied my beard. Oh, by the way, this is a friend of mine, Tree. I am Groot. I am Steve Rogers. Groot. Groot is definitely the muscle for the Guardians as an adult, easily being the strongest one on the team. He's able to control his body like no other, creating shield-like thickets, grow his body and completely surrounding the Guardians, restrain Gamora and Thanos and instantly grow in size and just straight up go inside people. Adult Groot is able to overpower and pierce through 10 opponents easily. Teenage Groot can stab three Outriders and lift them up in the air, and even Baby Groot is strong enough to strangle a larger Ravager. Groot has also got a remarkable healing factor, being able to regrow lost limbs in just a few hours, and his advanced regeneration can allow him to survive almost any attack that comes his way in a fight. Plus, whenever a Groot dies, another one will just be born, like when he died in Guardians, New baby Groot grew from one of his broken branches. Now, whatever you do, don't push this button. Because that will set off the bomb immediately and we'll all be dead. Now, repeat back what I just said. 
I am Groot. Uh huh. I am Groot. That's right. I am Groot. No! Now that's the button that will kill everyone! And not what you are, and not what you intended. So there may be no way to make you trust me, but we need to go. Next up is everyone's favorite android, Vision. Now, while Vision definitely didn't look too impressive in Avengers Infinity War, that could mostly be attributed to being stabbed through the chest by a sneak attack. I mean, that would put just about anybody out of the fight. But even through that, he was still able to eventually kill Corvus Glaive at the end of the day. But it was really Age of Ultron and Civil War that cemented his place as a powerhouse in the MCU. For starters, he was able to manipulate his density from where he's extremely tough and able to take just about any attack to where he can phase right through a person or walk through walls. He can even partially phase through an object and then disrupt it from the inside. Plus, Vision also has a freaking infinity stone in his forehead, which he can use to fire a powerful blast of energy that's on par of Iron Man's Repulsor Blast and Thor's Lightning. It's a privilege to be among them. You're unbearably naive. Well, I was born yesterday. Holy shit! <laughs> now, while Ant-Man is still pretty powerful, coming in at the middle of the pack on this list, when Scott goes big and transforms into Giant Man, well, he's just on a different level. As Giant Man, he's able to reach over 60 feet tall, and he's casually thrown War Machine over a hundred feet, ripped the wings off an airplane, kicked buses around, and in Avengers Endgame, Scott even went up against a Leviathan and freaking decked it just one punch just like the Hulk did in the original Avengers movie. On top of that, Giant Man is able to take attacks like they're nothing. And even though he is a bit slow and being large quickly tires him out, it still took the combined might of Iron Man, Spider-Man, and War Machine to take him down. Uh. <laughs> Does anyone have any orange slices? <laughs> Puny God. Now we've got the Green Goliath, the Hulk. He's arguably the strongest hero in the MCU. He's physically overpowered Thor and Hulkbuster on several different occasions, and is really just unstoppable except by a few. He's smashed Loki and Thor, defeated the Abomination. Brought down Leviathan with one punch, moves another one with pure strength. Battled against Fenris the Wolf, staggered Surtur with one blow, and is even battled against the Hulkbuster, which was specifically designed by Tony and Bruce in order to stop the Hulk. However, Hulk was trashed by Thanos and would have been beaten by Thor, so the big guy does have its limits. But it's not just the Hulk but also at Bruce Banner that takes him to this spot, the brains and the brawn. Bruce has got seven PhDs, is one of the smartest men on the planet, on par with Tony Stark, and has actually proven that he can hold his own in a fight. Like in Infinity War, it was Bruce in the Hulkbuster suit who defeated Black Dwarf, who was giving Iron Man and Spider-Man a hard time. Yeah, same. Hulk like fire, Thor like water. But Hulk like real fire. Hulk like raging fire. Till I like smoldering fire. Truth is, I am Iron Man. Speaking of Iron Man, here's the number six spot on our list. Tony Stark, just on his own, shouldn't be messed with, as he proved in Iron Man 3. But it's the fact that there's a suit made for every single occasion that puts him so high on the list. I mean, he's been able to battle against Thor, destroy a Leviathan on his own, 
and was able to battle against Ultron all on his own. And on top of that, Iron Man arguably has more versatility and range of weapons than almost any other hero out there. Then in the Hulkbuster suit, Tony is the only hero on this list who has been able to successfully defeat Hulk, even though Thor technically would have. And of his Bleeding Edge suit, well, that is just something else entirely. Tony can instantly summon it at will, and create any weapon that he can imagine, even stuff like swords or giant hammers. With this suit, he's been able to battle against Thanos on his own, take shots from the Infinity Gauntlet, and Thanos even dropped a freaking moon on Iron Man, and Tony was still fighting. But that's just scratching the surface for all the powers and abilities that Iron Man has shown over the years. But on top of that, Tony Stark is incredibly gifted at using his superhuman intelligence to help him win the fight. He's one of the smartest men in the world, and has shown his intelligence during the battles of Kobe and other fights. Yeah, big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. I Come on, Cap. <laughs> Nothing. If you thought that Scott Lang was the only one who'd be on this list twice, I'll guess again. It's everyone's favorite Star Spangled Man, Captain America. Or I guess I should say worthy Captain America. During the final battle in Avengers Endgame, Steve Rogers finally proved that he is worthy to wield Mjolnir, and this instantly bestowed him with the powers of Thor, and elevated him to a whole other level. I mean, he's decked Thanos, sending the guy stumbling backwards with his attacks, and was actually able to fight against the Mad Titan on his own. And on top of that, Captain America showed some skill with the hammer pretty much instantly, calling down lightning using the shield and hammer in combination to attack Thanos. And as for why I didn't include a Celestial Star-Lord or Iron Man with the Infinity Gauntlet on the list, well, that was just my choice. Feel free to include them in list down in the comments, though. And now, here's where things get very difficult. Because with these top four, Thor, Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, and Captain Marvel, well, he can make a convincing argument for every single one of these heroes to be in the number one spot. So let's take a look at all of them, and specifically, take a look at how they did up against the big bad of all the big bads, Thanos himself. And let's start off by taking a look at Thor, the God of Thunder. Now, Avengers Endgame did Thor really dirty, making him fatter and weaker than we'd ever seen him before. And while I get why Thor went through this character change, considering he was basically suffering from PTSD, in terms of power, big step down. I mean, if it had been Thor in his prime, dual wielding both Stormbreaker and Mjolnir, I have a feeling he could have taken down Thanos. But let's take a look at how Thor did in Avengers Infinity War. Ignoring the time where Thor withstood the power of a star, well, he was able to throw Stormbreaker and overpower Thanos with six Infinity Stones. It would have killed him if he'd gone for the head. And while the Russos have said that Thor caught Thanos by surprise, and Thanos would have done better if he had seen the attack coming, it's safe to say that the blast was still capable of destroying a planet at least, considering that the Power Stone is restored to planets, and it's even been said that the Space and Mind Stone had the power to destroy civilizations as well. All three of those combined, that's a powerful blast, and Thor overcame it. Then there's Captain Marvel. She's been championed as the most powerful character in the MCU. And she did look real powerful in Endgame. When she entered the atmosphere during the final battle, Thanos' ships started firing at her, instead of firing on literally every single hero in the MCU. Then she easily flew straight through the ship and destroyed it. Then in her fight against Thanos, well, she was actually able to overpower the Mad Titan and push his hand back. And when Thanos headbutted her, Carol didn't even flinch when the headbutt sent Iron Man flying backwards. Then there's the Scarlet Witch. 
Now, what it seems pretty clear that Thanos was holding back during the Battle of Wakanda because he knew he could win, Wanda held back Thanos with her blast, all while destroying an Infinity Stone with the other hand. She really did make the Mad Titan work to get past her energy attacks. And there was Endgame, where she was the one to cause Thanos to panic, had him an attack that he couldn't get out of, and had to call for backup and destroy some of his own troops just to get out of the attack. You could even argue that she could have killed Thanos in the moment by snapping his neck or something like that, but she wanted to torture him a bit to get revenge for Vision. Just like Thor had to get revenge for Loki and Heimdall, didn't instantly go for the kill. Then, finally, Doctor Strange. Now, you could argue this guy did better against Thanos than almost anyone else in a one-on-one -on -one fight. And you could also argue that Strange was holding back the entire time. I mean, he knew that there was only one way to beat Thanos. So he knew he was going to have to lose to set Endgame in motion for them to win. And he didn't even use his most powerful weapon, the Time Stone, to defeat Thanos. Yet he was still able to battle against a four stone Thanos, blocking blasts in the Power Stone or transmuting an attack from the Space Stone, or creating duplicates of himself to battle with Eldritch Whips. Now you could make an extremely compelling argument that any one of these heroes could be number one on this list. And honestly, it might just come down to personal preference. But here's my opinion. Number four, Captain Marvel. She's been able to push back against Thanos' hand, preventing him from snapping. And I don't want to take anything away from that. But I believe Hulk and Thor in their prime have that same level of strength as well. Hell, even after Strange, Captain America, Stark, Tech, and the Cloak of Levitation have held back Thanos' hand. And for when Thanos did end up using the Infinity Stones, well, he instantly knocked her out with one blast in the Power Stone. Probably the most impressive thing was taking a headbutt and not flinching. Number three, Scarlet Witch. She did better against Thanos than every other hero in Endgame, including Chunky Thor, Worthy Captain America and Iron Man together, and even Captain Marvel herself. I mean, she was the only one that really caused him to panic, and it's the only time he called for backup, and thought he couldn't take down the threat on his own. But with that being said, she is kinda a glass cannon. Real powerful offense, not much defense. Like Corvus Lathe, Fox on Midnight nearly killed her. And then she was taken down by slap from Thanos and taken out by Thanos' ship. Number two, Doctor Strange. He's definitely the most versatile character on this list and can do practically anything with the right spell. But able to get past the spells, he can be knocked out. And... I know, that might sound like a stupid argument, but while he did incredible in his fight against Thanos one-on-one, -on -one, he was momentarily thrown back or knocked out by Thanos a couple times throughout the fight, and then defeated in the first fight against Ebony Maw. Then lastly, number one, Thor. And his prime was Stormbreaker. He's been able to throw Stormbreaker and overpower all six Infinity Stones, which could have been at least a planetary level attack. Nearly killed Thanos, could have killed Thanos, and eventually did kill a weakened Thanos. And then I've been making a big deal about durability on this list, being able to take attacks as well as dishing them out. And I still think Thor has the best durability feat in the MCU, taking the full might of a star. I think Thor's got it all here, arguably the strongest attack the strongest durability, and combining the two would say he's the most powerful. But what do y'all think? I would love to hear your thoughts. Sign off in the list. What did you think of Avengers Endgame? Who do you think is the most powerful hero? Also be sure, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to join the Fanco army. And I will see you next time.